Basically, you start with your solution or your mixture in the 30, milli 30 milliliters of your mixture in a 50 milliliter round bottom flask. And you put it on the heating mantle, obviously turned off right now, and secure it with a two finger clamp, like so. You want to also use these two lab jacks in case it gets a little too hot. And then you can put it down, cool it. And you raise your lab jack. This is your heating mantle, 50 milliliter. Make sure the size matches up. Now the heating mantle is connected to a variac, which is just uh, supplies the voltage to the heating mantle in an incremental amount so you can control the heat. Um, make sure to build this from the top down, because as you'll see, it gets a little complicated. So now we're going to add our air column, but before we add our air column, we want to fill it with glass beads so the vapors can condense. With a little funnel, wide mouth, pour glass beads into the funnel. You want to make sure you haven't added too much. Right now, that's way too full. Why do you want space? Why do you want space? You want to have this much space from the top to the bottom, just so you can secure your apparatus and so it won't take forever. Now, before adding it to the round bottom flask, you want to grease your joints a little bit. Take a little bit of grease, put it on the joint, and then with the round bottom flask, just circle it around until you get a seal, and you'll see the difference. Just so it's clear. Otherwise, your glassware looks like this. The white parts are what you will get if you do not grease it. Now, you want to make sure your column is as straight as possible. So adjust your lab jack as you can. Next, we're going to add our adapter, our distillation adapter. But before we do that, we want to fit the thermometer onto it. Now, when you open up the distillation adapter head, you have a little O-ring, make sure not to drop it, that you put on the inside, so you can put the rubber, uh, so you can stop the temperature, I mean, the thermometer. So put the thermometer through. And then secure it back on. Now, it's very important to make sure that um, your thermometer, the bulb of your thermometer is just below the sidearm, because when the vapors come up, you want the temperature on the thermometer to be the temperature of your vapors so that are going to be escaping into the sidearm. So you want it to be just so. Now again, grease the joint a little bit. One portion which is where the water is going to go out. And ensure you have a clamp holding the end of it so that the water Seal it. Seal it out when it's coming. Um, and put a keck clamp in place. And this is for the water that's exiting the condenser. It has to be at the top portion. And you've secured the first part of your apparatus. Next, you're going to add your water condenser. First, you're going to add a little bit of grease. Again, the grease goes on the male end, obviously. Seal it again. Now make sure your water condenser is pointing downwards, like so. And again, apply a keg clamp at the joint. Now, you're going to add the last piece of your apparatus, which is the vacuum adapter, just to give it some air and to direct it downwards. Oh, grease the joint. Again, always use the male joint. 
same thing, you can wet it with the other of the two and you can insert it into the, into the condenser. And this is the water in portion. Again, you want to make sure your apparatus is always secure. So, if you see it loosening up, tighten it a little bit. Last piece. Ensure that the joint is oiled, and that's you're going to put very. And again, well another kick clamp. Oil, and you'll insert, and you'll twist it again. Make sure that you seal the joint. Now that you've adjusted the glassware, you can add a graduated cylinder for the distillation. When you're running a distillation, the distillate will come through the vacuum adapter and into the graduated cylinder where you can see in one milliliter increments or half a milliliter increments, depending on what you're asked for, what the volume is, and you will check the temperature. Again, make sure your thermometer is not dropped sure very low. As you adjust your apparatus, your thermometer might drop a little bit, so make sure it's adjusted correctly. And make sure your apparatus is as straight as possible. Now, you're going to be attaching vacuum tubes, I mean, water tubes, because you need water running through the air condenser. Water always, water has to be in the air condenser flowing upwards. So, the water line, we're going to connect this tubing to the bottom of the water condenser. So water will flow up the water condenser and then out here. Now, this end goes out to the sink, but it's connected to the upper. section of the water condenser. Now you also want to make sure that this outgoing tube is secured. So with some sort of clamp, just secure it in place, weigh it down, but don't restrict its motion too much. Now after making sure your apparatus is straight on all cross sections, Make sure your graduated cylinder is in place, and you're ready to run the distillation. Now, when you're running the distillation, you want to turn the variac on on a very low heat setting. I'm choosing two, even though I don't know what that corresponds to, temperature-wise. It's wisest to leave it on a lower heat setting, because the slower your fraction, the slower the vapors move up the column, the better dispersion you're going to have on your graph and the nicer the separation will be. So right now we're just going to wait for this to boil and oh, make sure when you have your apparatus set up that while you're boiling you run water through it. So very lightly at first open up the water line and make sure water is flowing throughout. Now. This is too little water. You want water to be uniform throughout the water jacket or condenser. And you can see vapors moving up your air column and reflux on the air column. Now, on the thermometer, you should see a reflux ring when it's about time for the distillation to occur. Right now we don't see it because it's still taking its sweet time. Um, make sure to put a boiling chip in your round bottom flask, otherwise it may bump and boil unevenly. And pretty soon, when the boiling occurs, the vapors will come up through the column. It takes longer for fractional distillation because you have all these glass beads where the vapor will sit on and condense and then continue upwards. And then it'll come here, and then finally, when it touches the cool vacuum apparatus, uh, when it touches the cool water condenser, it'll come back and it'll distill down here. So right now all you have to do is just wait for it to boil. Um, once it has boiled, the vapors again will travel up much slower than in simple distillation, and they will come back down into the graduated cylinder. In your graduated cylinder, when it reaches one milliliter of distillate, or 0.5 milliliters of distillate, uh, look at the thermometer and mark the temperature at which your distillate is at. If you've set up the thermometer correctly, 
then your temperature should be around the range of the boiling point of the first fraction, depending on what it is you are distilling. Now, as you see, you're about to get little drops of distillate. Um, you want to adjust the rate of heating so that you get about one drop per second. This is much too slow right now. When your graduated cylinder reaches the appropriate milliliter mark, you should mark the temperature that it is at. Right now I'm at about a half a milliliter, so I'm going to go up to the temperature, and the temperature is at about 55 degrees Celsius. Again, you see the vapor is moving up the column. Now, what you want to do is when you get to a certain mark, let's say, the, let's say four milliliters, you will switch this graduated cylinder with another graduated cylinder and collect a fraction for gas, chrom gas chromatography to analyze at what point the mixture separated. So right now you're collecting the fifth milliliter. You've collected four milliliters already and you're collecting your fifth milliliter. Put this in a test tube, parafilm it, and use it for gas chromatography. Left.